What we learned from the financial crisis, I think, is the fact that there are three key elements that we have to understand to understand global financial instability. First, we have to understand the leverage. By leverage, I mean the quantity of debt divided by the value of assets, but the volume of debt by itself has lots of information about uh, indebtedness of financial sector. Debt first. Second, connectedness. So there are some key actors in the financial sectors lending to each other, and there may be some systemic actor, either big one or a smaller one, that are key, in meaning that if they default, the whole system is at risk. And the third element is, let's call it, asset mispricing, too low risk premium, that may generate some increase in leverage, some increase or evolution in connectedness, and generating global financial instability. To conclude, I think that financial instability is key for everyone, and for unemployment, for the dynamic of output, for imbalances, for public finance. All those elements on the real side of the economy are affected either by big financial crises or by financial cycles. So to understand the stability of our economy, we must at the same time think about the real economy and financial instability and the link between the two. One important lesson of the last financial crisis uh, uh, has been that uh, the heterogeneity of agents is important uh, and also that uh, uh, some uh, externalities uh, that stem from the actions of some agents uh, and have consequences for the behavior uh, and also the financial uh, uh, fragility of ad ad other agents in the systems indeed are important for generating uh, systemic crises like uh, the, the financial crisis we uh, experienced uh, in uh, 2008. Another important factor also that, uh, uh, that should be considered is that uh, in what we see is also that these crises are in general endogenous. They are not the result from, of some exogenous shock, but rather are really due to the behavior of agents uh, and uh, um, they, can be, uh, they can be then uh, generated also by all these factors that we, we just mentioned, so heterogeneity, externalities. Just to summarize, heterogeneity, externality and endogeneity are all factors that should be taken into account by uh, any uh, modeling approach that aims to analyze uh, uh, financial stability issues. The aim of this workshop is precisely to, uh, to gather together, together uh, uh, academic scholars and central bankers in order to discuss the subjects and to discuss how new also new approaches that incorporate uh, heterogeneity, externalities and heterogeneity of crisis like financial network models and agent-based models can usefully, be, uh, can usefully contribute to the analysis of financial stability issues. One of the questions that have been discussed in this workshop is the uh, price of financial complexity. Uh, what is it? Uh, so, on the one hand, it is clear that today, uh, facing the increasing complexity of business, uh, we need to uh, have a certain level of financial complexity and this has to do enable uh, we need that in order to um, uh, ensure uh, so against certain risks in order to enable risk diversification in, in order to uh, uh, take advantage of business opportunities uh, on the other hand there is a, 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 an aspect that we tend to uh, neglect and over overlook which is that the uh, complexity of financial instruments and the complexity of financial uh, networks, uh, that means chains of, of financial contracts, uh, has unintended consequences. And as we've been showing in a recent paper, there are uh, two aspects of this. One is that uh, financial complexity can increase the uh, probability of a systemic default, and uh, even uh, worse, at the same time, it may increase the inaccuracy um, by which um, um, the probability of a systemic uh, default can be assessed, which means that the more the financial system is complex, the less regulators are able to know about uh, the systemic risk. And this is important. It's important to know because it, 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 it poses challenges on the ability of supervisors and central banks 
to tame systemic risk. So in the end, we should regard uh, financial complexity as um, uh, the object of a trade-off. We need some level of complexity, but we need to have, you need to be aware that too much complexity has negative consequences for the social welfare of citizens and institutions. The global financial crisis uh, illustrated uh, the importance of, of monitoring the interconnectedness uh, among financial institutions, that interconnectedness uh, within the financial system could be a, an important source of financial stability risk or systemic risks. And for that purpose, the ECB and other central banks, after the crisis or since the crisis, have started right. developing a number of tools and models and indicators uh, trying to address or to, to monitor and, and capture uh, risks related to, to financial system interconnectedness. Uh, a number of, say, what we call macro potential policy tools have been set in place after the crisis and some of them are aiming at addressing, uh, say, risks coming from interconnectedness and trying to mitigate those risks, such as capital requirements for, for systemic institutions, uh, can also in large exposure limits and various types of liquidity instruments. And of course, many of the policy instruments that have been put in place that could be triggered in order to, to address these risks, try to, 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 say, reduce the cost of contagion but of, of course, on the other hand, one also needs to keep in mind, the, say, the other side of the coin, that uh, financial interlinkages are important in order to uh, keep the financial system uh, and the, the real economy uh, going. Uh, it, it's an important element that financial institutions can diversify risk and, and, and share uh, transactions between each other. And of course, one needs, whenever one tries to impose a policy measure that tries to to uh, reduce the contagion risk, one also needs to keep in mind that it may come at a cost of lower activity in the financial system. So one needs to, to conduct this type of cost-benefit analysis uh, for, for, for real or practical uh, policy analysis and decision making. Life insurers and asset managers uh, play a very important role in the French financial system because uh, it's a main source of uh, saving for household. For this reason, they are exposed to systemic risk. On their liability side, they, like banks, they are su subject to uh, redemptions or uh, surrender risk, meaning that uh, people can uh, buy back their shares and therefore uh, lead them to, uh, to sell assets. And on their asset side, they can also uh, fire sell assets, therefore triggering contagion for the whole financial system. That's the reason for why they are systemic uh, from this perspective. The, the financial crisis has shown the necessity, the need to increase a bank's capital and liquidity. And uh, we can see that uh, 10 years after the crisis, uh, banks have significantly increased their capital. Uh, bank, French banks have more than doubled the level of capital. They have accumulated a large uh, buffer of liquidity. This is very important and makes the financial system more stable. The second direction I see very important is the, the introduction of resolution and uh, the need to prepare ahead for in case of a crisis and how to resolve a bank uh, in case a crisis uh, takes place. The final uh, dimension I, I, I find very interesting and uh, the ACPR that has made research on it is the impact of the, the JCB agenda. The, the, the FSB, the Financial Stability Board, has determined the banks which are seem, seem to be systemic. And from that point of view, regulation has been implemented for that to, to identify the banks that were systemic and to uh, implement further capital requirements. And we show a recent study that we, we published show that the, the banks, uh, actually this has an effect on the banks, which have now uh, the, 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 the share of banks, uh, of the GSIPs in total, uh, large, in, in, in large banks, have decreased since the, the regulation was implemented. So I see this as a way of um, uh, making sure that the financial system is more stable uh, before the crisis. The challenges that I see now, nowadays is uh, when this uh, framework is, is, is put in place, is something which is, uh, which in my view is, is um, growing, is the climate change. And from that point of view, climate change is an issue that uh, 
the financial system has to, to take care of and the, uh, the, the, the Banque de France and the, uh, has, has put in place a, a new network with the central banks and the supervisor in order to deal with climate change and to see to, to identify and address the risk that come from climate change and it is important that we go ahead in that direction. We have been using network models at the Central Bank for Financial Stability purposes from I think 2006 already. So we have had a, a good chance to, to test them, to use them. We have had uh, reports on network models in the Financial Stability Report officially since 2007. We had uh, a precedent which allow us, uh, allowed us to, to have uh, these useful network models. We had this uh, 1994 crisis in Mexico, which was a huge financial crisis. And so, since then, we have started to ask a lot of uh, very low granularity information from banks which has been to our advantage because nowadays many of the other central banks have been uh, also starting to collect the data which will allow them to do some of the research that we have been doing since 2007. Uh, now uh, we are more interested into trying to, to see what will be the impact also coming from the real sector of the economy into the banking system and luckily, we also have data from the payment systems, which we are now using in order to estimate uh, how the shocks into uh, real economy sectors uh, will uh, interact with the uh, banking system and then maybe with the financial system as a whole. So I think the, the, financial, the 2008 financial crisis has led to a complete revisit of, um, of ideas that people believed in the past about market stability and market efficiency. And I think this is very good. We, we discovered since then that markets are subject to a, a whole variety of unstable feedback loops where um, agents, psychology, uh, network effects, interaction effects, uh, trust collapse can play a major role and I hope that all this will lead to workable and, and more efficient models to describe what's happening in financial markets in the years to come. Science.